Hey, I'm John and on Heads Up for Hosers, we're gonna be talking about the O-ring face seal. And I have a seal face. You guys know I'm gonna read what is ever in the prompter. You put a seal face on me, didn't you? As hydraulic system pressures kept increasing by the late 1970s, existing connections such as JIC 37 degree flare fittings fell short of meeting the pressure and leakage challenges. The industry also wanted a connection that was more forgiving of damage and over torquing that would also have a higher working pressure and resistance to vibration than a flared connection. A totally new fitting concept using a soft seal for greater reliability was needed. In the early 1980s, a committee of industry individuals worked for almost five years developing the O-ring flat face fitting, also known as ORFS. The ORFS fitting is a hose and tube connection that has a machined flat face with an O-ring that is held into the face of the fitting. The ORFS has a straight thread, so no sealing can be done on the actual threads. Instead, the O-ring provides the surface to seal on. This makes it more forgiving than a metal-to-metal -metal seal and exponentially more reusable than sealing with crushed threads like on a pipe thread. The pressure ratings for ORFS are higher than other fittings in the same applications. This connection is similar to the SAE split flange connection in concept we have discussed in previous Heads Up for Hosers videos. The difference is, instead of using a flange kit to connect the fitting, we use the actual thread. The ORFS connection offers the very best leakage control available today. With the ORFS connection, it is almost impossible to over torque because of the flat face. The seal takes place by compressing the O-ring onto the flat face of the female fitting. And the threads hold together mechanically. Since the development of the ORFS connection, an improvement was made on the O-ring groove. The new design incorporates a half dovetail groove to add more positive retention of the O-ring. Without the half dovetail, when plumbing hydraulic systems where the fitting was hanging vertically, the O-ring tends to fall out of place. Here we see the difference between the old style groove and the new dovetail style. Performance of the fitting is the same overall, with the only difference being the better retention of the O-ring. The ORFS fitting is excellent in vibration and or temperature cycling environments. This is because an O-ring is excellent at absorbing impact and temperature fluctuations. To avoid leaking, an O-ring must be chosen that is compatible with the fluid in the system. If you miss this step, your O-ring could deteriorate and the system could fail. The most common is Buna N nitrile O-rings. This elastomer is a great general purpose sealing option. Buna N is resistant to many oils and lubricants and has a wide temperature range. There are too many O-ring and hydraulic fluid combinations to fully go through, so for specific applications, please consult the back of the Greg's catalog or contact your local branch for an extensive list of fluid and elastomer compatibility. Since the sealing takes place on the O-ring and not on the thread as shown, this makes the ORFS fitting highly reusable. Here at Greg Distributors, we recommend replacing the O-ring every time the fitting is reused. Always use a 90 durometer O-ring in an ORFS connection. So, durometer is a measure of hardness of a material. The higher the number, the harder the material. By hardness, we mean the material's resistant to indentation. For example, chewing gum has a durometer of 25, an automotive tire is 70, and a skateboard wheel is 98, with the scale being out of 100. So in relation to fittings, it's important to have an O-ring with the proper durometer depending on the pressure you're dealing with. ORFS fittings will always use a 90 durometer O-ring. ORFS connections come in a variety of orientations and sizes. Here at Greg Distributors, we carry sizes from dash four to dash 24 that are good for pressures up to 6,000 PSI through the dash size of 16. Now you may be asking what a dash size is. A dash size is the determination of sizes for hose, tubes, and fitting measurements. This is measured in 1 16th inch segments. In this video series, we will be dealing mostly with hose and fittings, 
but note that for tubing, the dash size calculation is slightly different. Here is a hose example. When dealing with most types of hose, dash 32 equals 32 1 16th inch segments, which equals 32 sixteenths, or equal to 2 inch hose ID. Now, to identify male ORFS fittings, you will know you're dealing with an ORFS fitting versus other fittings by a few simple identifiers. First, the ORFS fittings will have a flat face with an O-ring embedded into the face of the fitting. Two, the ORFS fittings have a straight thread. Now, take your male fitting and measure the outside diameter. We get one and seven sixteenths of an OD. Opening our identification booklet and moving to the ORFS page and looking at the OD, we move over to the dash size where it says that this is a dash 16 fitting. To confirm that this is a dash 16 fitting, we next look at the thread where it says 1 and 7 16 hyphen 12, where the number next to the OD, in this case 12, is the thread pitch. To confirm this, we take out our thread pitch gauge and find 12 and lay it on the threads like so. See here that we have a nice fit. This confirms that this is 12 threads per inch and one and 7 16 OD, confirming that in fact we have a dash 16 ORFS fitting. Moving on to female ORFS fittings. The female ORFS fitting will always have a few identifying factors. First, that there is a straight thread. Secondly, there's a flat metal surface for the O-ring to seal on. To confirm that we have a female or FS fitting, we'll first measure the inside diameter of any position of the fitting. Here we have one and three eighths. Looking at our identification booklet, at the inside diameter of one and three eighths, we see that we have a dash size of 16 and a thread size of one and seven sixteenths hyphen 12, where the 12 again is the thread pitch. To confirm this, we take out our thread pitch gauge and find 12, and we lay it on the threads like so. We have a nice fit, which confirms that this is 12 threads per inch, and one and three eighths inch ID confirming that this is dash 16 ORFS female fitting. And now for installation. First thing you want to do is check the O-ring for any damage. If you see any damage, replace the O-ring with a new one. When installing the O-ring into the half dovetail groove that we talked about before, the O-ring must be installed dry. Once the O-ring is installed and before connecting, the O-ring must now be externally lubricated with a fluid from the system that you are working on. You can also use a lubricant like this one from Eaton. To install an ORFS fitting, first you'll pull down the installation nut of the female fitting. Next you want to align both faces of the female and male fittings. You pull the nut up and start to thread the fittings together. Tighten the nut until it's hand tightened. Finally, tighten further until you feel a sharp rise in torque. The sharp rise in torque gives a solid feel at assembly, minimizing the possibility of over tightening. So let us review. Because the ORFS fittings seal on an O-ring rather than on the threads or anywhere else, there are a limited number of areas this fitting can fail. Most of the time, if there is a leak while using an ORFS fitting, it is due to the O-ring. Always inspect the O-ring prior to installation to check for damage or contamination. Here at Greg's, we always recommend to replace the O-ring if there is any damage while reinstalling an ORFS fitting. Damage or contamination can also occur on the flat surface sealing area, so be sure to check here as well before installation. If you would like any more information on the ORFS fitting and how it can help you, or you just want to talk to a Canadian hoser, you can call our order desk and you never know, you might end up talking to me. You can also find us on our website at gregdistributors.ca. 
Thanks for watching and supporting a 100% made in Canada business. See you next time on Heads Up for Hosers when we travel to faraway lands to explore foreign threat identification. You're going to turn me into a seal again, aren't you?